that we could set up a store that would work the same way. So we went down on Cross Street, right across the New Block Hotel, and rented a store. And the first year and a half or two years, we had a wonderful business and paid a lot of dividends. And then along came Andrew Mellon and his idea of shutting off all the programs of little business. And we were uh, victims of that. Went broke. And Eddie and I spent the rest of our lives paying off the debt of that organization. I didn't go into bankruptcy because about that time I went into the uh, uh, county court as judge of the county court for the Eastern District. And they couldn't put me into bankruptcy, but they did Eddie. And he and I eventually paid off everything we owed with uh, by settlement or by paying the total amount that was due. And I want to say to you that there never was a partner equal to Eddie Jacobson. He did his duty both to me and to the public, and I'll never forget it. Mr. President, how does business start to go bad in the habit Besides Andrew Mellon, I mean, in very specific terms. Well, of course, when you have a great, uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it, the uh, uh, a great inventory. And they cut the price of that inventory in half. What are you going to do? You've lost everything you have, and that's what happened to us. The customers stopped coming the present of the general No, price. no, the customers kept coming. I kept coming. But the reason they, they kept coming was not on account of the fact they could do any better there and they could anywhere else is because Eddie and I had too many friends. But they couldn't keep on coming. And in the end, we had to lose what we had. Cut. County politics, which I did, became Eastern Judge of the County Court of Jackson County, and then was elected presiding judge of the County Court of Jackson County, and ran the county for eight years. And then I had the uh, hope that maybe I might run for Congress in the Fourth District, which I had helped to set up in the Missouri layout, and it didn't work out. So I ran for the United States Senate and was elected and uh, returned to the Senate for the second time in 1940. And then, due to the fact that during that period, I had worked on a committee known as the Committee to Investigate the National Defense Program and became somewhat of a medical figure. And and I was for Chicago, uh, elected vice president by the convention in Chicago. And as vice president, I succeeded to President Franklin D. Roosevelt in his life. And that's how it came about. But when you see any effort on my part, it just happened. Part of the game. President, that uh, you have indicated before that uh, you have run for the Senate being unable to run for Congress because the local political setup felt that you ought to be gotten out of the way because you couldn't be controlled. Well, I think, that, I think that is correct, but then I never said that publicly, Bill, because I think that uh, uh, I would have won no matter what they did to me under the circumstances, and that's the way it came about. But then I want you to understand that this was a maneuver from uh, the beginning 
fit in uh, to get me out of the way, maybe. But then, at any rate, I became United States Senator from Missouri and was re-elected in 1940 under very ad adverse circumstances. And so, there you are. President, what is the essential difference? Describe the difference, if you will, between local or county politics and national. There are no differences. They're all just alike. They, they run the same way. When a fellow is in charge of a city, a village, or a county, he has the same difficulties that they have as...